Well, Christine, thanks ever so much for joining me. Um, really good to see you and good to have an opportunity to talk with you about active support today. Um, before we, I've got a few questions for you, but before we start, can I just ask you to tell me what is active support? How would you define it? Oh, I suppose all it is is basic, basically staff understanding what it is for a start and enabling people, whatever disability they have, to take part in their own lives. Okay. Um, and, and that can be quite difficult for staff to do, uh, you know, if we look at somebody with profound disabilities or mild learning disabilities or mental health. So it's about enabling people to do stuff in their lives. And you've said that it's about staff understanding what active support is. Is it? It's not just about training then, is it? No, uh, we know if we put people on training, um, it doesn't always make a difference and, and staff tend to forget and misinterpret what the trainer will have said. Um, active support and, and supporting staff, we have to really think of practice leadership and coaching them to work in this way. And I, I often see um, active support as being positive behaviour support for staff, looking at that staff change and that different way that we can interact with people so it's it can be quite complex and you do need systems in place mm. so it's clearly much more fundamental than simply saying this is about training have you ever had a situation where you've come across barriers or resistance from staff yeah um usually where the organization isn't ready and they just send people along and and there's usually the same kinds of uh, barriers we haven't got enough time mm. we haven't got enough staff the people we work with are far too complicated. Um, it's a person's choice not to do anything. Um, and um, you don't know the people like we know them, you know, that, that kind of thing. So, mm. and, and I think fair enough, if they've been left to come up with those ideas, we're obviously not, not supporting them correctly. So it's, it's not always their fault because obviously as a manager, we wouldn't want our team to be thinking those ways. So this is this is something that unlocks some of those limiting beliefs, I suppose you could call those things that you've just described, yeah. where we get it right and the organisation is ready and the staff are ready. Do you find that it sustains after the after the, 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 the training has been delivered? No, usually it fizzles out. We find that staff are very enthusiastic. Um, the managers usually are, but it's not a just job. <laughs> It's, it has to be embedded and ingrained within supervision, performance reviews, and linking into outcomes and quality of life. Uh, you know, it, it's not fair on managers to make this sustainable because they can't do it on their own either. And that's why we need everybody on board for this. Okay. <clears throat> so that's saying again, really, it's not like, it's, this isn't about attending a training course, doing the learning and then applying it. It's something more profound that you talked about practice practice leadership what do you think makes for good practice leadership in an organization and what what do you think the benefits of that are for people who are supported but also potentially families as well yeah okay well practice leadership is different to administrative leadership where practice leaders need to be at the service in the service and supporting and reinforcing really good positive staff behavior um, and as an organization we need to be looking at well what are our practice leaders you know what what is their role because usually we um, develop practice leaders or managers and they tend to end up not actually being in the service so um, it's about coaching their staff to work in this way and giving that great feedback and that's a day-to-day -day thing, day-to-day, -day, mm -hmm. hour by hour, isn't it? Yeah. What would you like to see then <clears throat> that would make it more um, available to organisations, to make organisations more aware of active support and to, so that it becomes much more widespread? What, what do you think should be happening? Well, as you know, we're having lots of people really interested in active support because um, commissioners are talking about um, active support a bit more. And um, it's... I've lost track. So this, this question was about what what you think needs to happen, Christine, so oh, that it's more more widespread, more yeah. organisations are able to sustain it and embed it in the way that you've spoken about. OK, certainly looking at organisational uh, readiness, you know, are we in a position to take on the training um, because it 
active support really starts looking at culture within the organization um, and training and HR systems, uh, et cetera. Um, so they need to start looking at that. I think skills for care could um, look at areas of developing uh, projects and maybe funding around uh, active support if certain criteria is in place. Okay. Um, I think that's important. And, um, and having uh, support for the practice leads as well. And that's something I know ARC have been thinking about, about mm. having, uh, you know, work days where we can tease out any problems. Mm. Um, yeah. So we're fortunate to have you working with ARC. You've been working with us for a long time. You, you, um, you know about active support. You've been involved in it for, for how long? Um, probably the last 20 years. Okay, that's it, quite, it, yeah, we had quite a, a decent time. A project in Wales, Art Cymru, and uh, we developed that and reintroduced active support. Um, and then we took it on, we were able to uh, develop it across the rest of the UK after the project had finished, finished which was fantastic. So what do, what would an ARC member need to do to get access to this? How would they need to, to what would they need to do the next steps? Okay, well, uh, what, what we're offering is uh, an hour's presentation and uh, I'll deliver that. Just give us a ring or an email and uh, say you're interested in learning a little bit more or you think you may be ready or you may not be ready or we are ready and we just want to bring it up and see what it looks like in practice um, or even talk about some of the barriers. Um, you know, that, that's a first step and... Um, yeah. So that sounded to me as if an ARC member could get a free consultation with you. Absolutely. Uh, just give us a ring. Fantastic.